The person who invented the Internet was undoubtedly a genius. Do you know how the Internet achieves global connectivity? The key lies in these undersea fiber optic cables spanning the four oceans, connecting the entire world together. If you ever experience a slow network, it might be because a shark is nibbling on your undersea cables. The Internet began to spread in the 1990s. And back then, coaxial cables were used for networking. It relied on electrical signals and required a voice separator to distinguish telephone signals from internet signals because they shared the same line. So when you were on the phone, you couldn't access the internet and it was susceptible to external electromagnetic interference. But what we use now is primarily fiber optics. Fiber optic cables are thinner than a strand of hair. If you magnify them, they are essentially glass with a high refractive index. When light enters them, it undergoes total internal reflection. As a result, our network signals are transmitted at nearly the speed of light, which is why we don't feel much latency when browsing. However, our computers cannot directly interpret light signals. Therefore, we use optical transceivers, which are essentially our modems, to convert them into electrical signals. When light hits the photosensitive diode inside, it generates electrons and electron holes. Electron holes are attracted to the negative terminal, and electrons are attracted to the positive terminal. This is how optical to electrical conversion works. After conversion, the electrical signals are sent to a router. And finally, the router connects to our computers, allowing us to access the Internet. Do you know who invented the Internet? Israel's Iron Dome anti-missile system has been making headlines lately. With a successful interception rate of 90% for each missile, it's impressive. But with Hamas launching 5,000 rockets in just 20 minutes, can the Iron Dome really defend against such a saturation attack? The Iron Dome air defense system is comprised of three key components. The battle command center, the missile launcher, and the most crucial part the detection and tracking radar. The missile launcher can hold 20 missiles. When deployed near a city, it acts like a protective shield for that city. The battle command center is responsible for sending interception commands, only attacking when the rocket enters a predetermined range. Interestingly, this small interceptor missile can cover a range of 70 kilometers, even though it's only 2.8 meters tall and weighs just 90 kilograms. Here's the critical part. When multiple enemy missiles target a city, the Iron Dome defense system activates. The radar can detect threats within 100 kilometers, then sends the data to the battle command system, which sends commands to the missile launcher and tracks the trajectory of the enemy missile. Once the target enters the protected zone, the interceptor missile is quickly launched, locks onto the target, and pursues it. When it gets close enough, the warhead detonates, and the shrapnel inside triggers the enemy bomb to explode. It's noteworthy that one Hamas rocket costs only $80, while intercepting it with the Iron Dome costs $50,000 per missile. That's quite a difference in interception costs. Even if you are dying of thirst, you shouldn't drink seawater directly. Is there any scientific basis for this statement? It's actually quite simple to verify this. We just need to conduct a seawater heating experiment to understand. First, we go to the seaside and collect some seawater. Then we put the seawater in a pot and heat it until it dries up. At this point, we can see that only a bunch of white solid particles remain at the bottom of the pot. These solid substances not only contain a lot of the salt we are familiar with, but also some sulfates and harmful metals. When a large amount of salt enters the body, our internal water-salt balance is disrupted. At this point, our kidneys start to work faster to dilute the excess salt and excrete it through urine. The dilution process requires sufficient water. At this time, not only will you become more thirsty, but as the dilution accelerates, your urine output will also significantly increase. If you don't consume water at this time, the kidneys will work under excessive strain. You'll urinate more frequently, gradually leading to dehydration. What's worse is when the salt level in the body exceeds the range that the body can tolerate, it will cause cells to lose water and die. Through this experiment, we can also conclude that drinking seawater directly 
will not quench your thirst. Instead, it will make you even more thirsty. And on the contrary, it can cause dehydration, ultimately accelerating the process of death. According to incomplete statistics, among people who have died at sea, those who drank seawater have a death rate that is 12 times higher than those who didn't. So, when faced with a maritime disaster, do you know any good methods to make seawater drinkable? Did you know Judge Judy isn't a real judge? I'm speaking. Try putting on your listening ears. Well, she used to be one, but she doesn't serve as a judge on her show. In fact, these trials you see on TV aren't actually real. They're a process known as arbitration. This is a different method for resolving disputes outside of court. And arbitrations don't use judges. Instead, they use a neutral and unbiased person to make a decision about the conflict. So these trials you see on TV are really just a civil dispute, dressing up like it's real court. The Titanic is disappearing at an alarming rate. Scientists are estimating that it will be completely gone within 20 years. And this is due to it being eaten away by bacteria and other marine life. New footage shows the captain's bathtub, a favorite image among Titanic enthusiasts. It's almost completely dissolved at this point. The Titanic currently resides about two miles below the North Atlantic. And while there have been many schemes proposed to raise the Titanic, with its current condition, there's just no way that that can happen without severe damage. Not to mention, letting the ship rest and disappear in peace is probably the more ethical thing to do. In 1950, Whataburger opened its first location in Corpus Christi, Texas. But what most people don't know is that around the same time, 1,200 miles across the country, another Whataburger was selling its first burger. Both Whataburger and Whataburger sold burgers for the next 20 years before they discovered each other. Once they learned of each other's existence, the two restaurants discussed merging into one company, but eventually decided to peacefully coexist. While one of these restaurants clearly outshined the other, the Virginia-based Whataburger is still in operation today. I think it'd be really cool if someone did a blind taste test of the two. Surprisingly, a friendly lick from a pet can sometimes have fatal consequences. In some unfortunate cases, people have lost limbs or even their lives due to seemingly harmless interactions with their pets. In 2019, a woman in a foreign country was licked by her dog, and the next day, she began experiencing symptoms similar to a cold. At first, she didn't pay much attention to it. However, when she started developing a fever, shortness of breath, and severe body aches, she rushed to the hospital. Her condition had deteriorated significantly by then. Her hands and feet had changed in color, and her condition was rapidly worsening. Doctors conducted a blood test and found that she was infected with a bacterium known as Capnocytophaga canamorsis, which is commonly found in a dog's saliva. The woman's condition deteriorated so much that it led to sepsis spreading to her entire body. Unfortunately, she had to have all four limbs amputated to save her life. A similar case occurred in the United States in 2018, when a man had his limbs amputated after being licked by his dog. Even his nose was affected by the infection. Close contact with pets should be taken seriously, as many cats and dogs carry harmful bacteria in their mouths. For example, approximately 90% of cats carry a bacteria called Pastorella multicida in their saliva. In 2021, an elderly person in Australia experienced a severe infection after being licked by their own cat, which led to sepsis, organ failure, and other health issues. Unfortunately, the person passed away two weeks later due to the deadly bacteria in the cat's saliva. These real-life cases should serve as a warning to anyone who is in close contact with pets. After reading about these cases, would you still dare to engage in close contact with your pets? Regular prisoners are served plain vegetables with rice for each meal. There is no fixed dining hall. Prisoners have to eat in their beds. Even the drinking water comes from the sewage system. And there is no privacy in the prison. Taking a shower is a public affair, with hundreds of people watching. If someone's health deteriorates and they contract an illness, they are put in isolation. After spending 15 days in confinement, Dumajit could finally resume regular prison life. Although cleaning the prison was dirty and exhausting work, it was better than staying in the stifling cells. Every Saturday, prisoners are allowed to have a three-hour family visit. During this time, relatives bring food, clothing, and other necessities. Some inmates even get to have lunch with their families. However, the guards thoroughly inspect every item brought in. To prevent contraband from entering the prison, Dumajit used to be a farmer. He has a wife and four children at home. However, with him in prison, his wife has to shoulder all the family responsibilities. 
She doesn't even have time to visit him, so he can only stand by and envy others. If family visits are the happiest moments, then surprise inspections in the prison are the most terrifying. The prison guards conduct room searches every month, confiscating items like phones, blades, and spoons that were smuggled in during family visits. If contraband is found, prisoners are punished. Getting legally convicted in this prison is nearly impossible. So Dumajit even contemplated escaping. If all of you were imprisoned in this facility, would you wait for your trial or take the risk of escaping?